Let's head to our chair that's next to the wall. You got all your yoga props out, which could be blankets, bolster, sandbag, uh, one of these balls, any kind of ball that has ability, has ability to squish into, which I think is the, I think most of them do, except for maybe the, the really firm uh, thera, thera balls, but have a ball between the knees. And if you don't, for instance, have one, you can use a yoga block. That would be adequate for this sequencing. But I want you to, to explore when you're seated, how the balance is from your sitting parts, because you don't probably put all your sitting parts on a chair. I mean, I tend to have kind of my leg kind of off of the chair so I can get my knees and my, my pelvis into this level so my knees aren't angling over my ankles. So just notice, well, how do I sit? And how does that awareness kind of move into my, my arch of my spine? So if you can possibly just be forward with your vision versus towards the screen and experiment with the hands moving back to the chair so that you're holding on to the chair and you might have your arms, because remember this is the arms of the chair and your arms, and they both create this ability to open up and feel a a spread of the chest and actually more so the collarbones. Now the collarbones are kind of in a, a saggy space most of the day, they kind of sag down. So try to reduce the sag of the collar. And then if your feet feel as if they're a little too far forward because your hip flexors could get kind of spicy here, you can certainly slide them in. I want you to feel like your, your front of your thighs are, are feeling the crease but not starting to feel like they're shaky. So let the experiment be here that you squeeze the ball. If you need to reset it because it pops out, that's fine. Relax the grip. So your inhale is belly relaxed and your exhale is squeezing the ball. Inhale, keep the arms back and exhale, squeeze. Now you might find you have to change the arm orientation so it's easier on your shoulders. That's okay, even if it's in your lap, but try to keep that alternating squeeze and feeling when the breath moves down to the abdominal organs and then feel when you squeeze the ball, does the breath kind of grip up like tense? It's kind of a natural order of things with using a prop to work out, right? You grip around the holding of the prop. Okay, so I want you to stop with the, the alternating and stay with the grip. So squeeze into the ball, keep that control. Okay, and then slide the left hand away from behind the chair, reach the left hand to the right leg, could be to the knee, could be just besides the knee or a little bit up on the thigh, but rotate and spiral through the spine. And I can't keep the squeeze like 100%, it's about 80. So I feel what's a reasonable squeeze, but on my work is I'm lifting the chest almost obnoxiously so, but just for yoga, I'll do it. <laughs> okay, so feel where there is that movement through the chest to turn. Okay, and then I want you to look down to your knees. This is really important here. And even if the squeeze of the knees is, you know, 60 to 80% is fine. Notice if the right knee's flush back a little bit, right? You tend to twist and then you, you know, change the structure of the bone. So I want you to try to keep those knees right in the same track. So there's no the swish of the hip back. Okay, there's, there's no rock and roll with the hip. So you wanna to try to keep that forward. Now for me, my hip flexors get a little fired up. So my work is on reaching up with my chest, use this part to keep your legs forward because if I slouch, then I really don't have any core control. So come back to center. You don't wanna overdo that experiment on the right side. Change sides, so right hand to the left leg. If you can feel, right, when you stop the grip of the ball, you do kind of slide the, the movement of the knee back, it's, it's typical, right? So what I'm trying to do is keep the squeeze 
strengthen into my right oblique. If it's difficult and your knee's kind of shifting back, then get a ruler. Now, come get a ruler. But you do want to have that straight across. So right hand to left leg, rotate. Left hand is pretty comfy back on the chair. It's not trying to reach to the other side of the chair. Squeeze and turn to the left. Inhale, chest is up. Now things are getting so tense because you're trying so hard to be, be to do good. You know, notice if you can relax the belly, breathe. Isolate the muscles that are holding that ball. And then come back to the center and lift the shoulders with a shrug and roll them back. And then let's take the ball aside. And I want you to move uh, a block into your hands and cross that right foot. You might even kind of swing the leg, hopefully with your spine up. This is like rounding. Now try to keep spine up and swing that right leg a little forward and back. You might notice when you reach through the leg, the foot is kind of stern. Right? It doesn't necessarily flop very much. When I reach, I'm going to use my right hand to help that right ankle across to the left knee. <laughs> and my knee has a hammer going in towards the foot like it's trying to help. So don't be a helper. Okay, let the, the leg do the work. So cross that right foot to the left knee. And then make sure you're seated well on the, on the chair so you're not falling off of it. Taking the, the first reach here, you're gonna reach forward. Focus on the leg part, okay? Your waist is moving forward. And then moving the block in front, this is got two different options here. One is, is that you kind of mildly hold on to the block. It's, Kind of mellow, it's not force, I'm not trying to hand it over to anybody, but you have a reaching path out of your back. And then try bending your elbows here so that it's like you're going to put the block on your forehead. And then keep leaning and lift up the arms holding the block and see if you can reach the elbows back to. The sides of your head, so it's like you've got an element, not a helmet, but an el element here. Okay, so my hands are onto the block sides and the block is wide. And when I go into this pattern of stretching my triceps, I have to be a little careful not to over, overly arch, not exaggerate the arch. So you might find that you lean forward, and this is about as far as you can go with the spine lengthening, right? You're not trying to do this, like overarch the back, that hurts. So if it's barely forward, that's fine. So lift up the arms. If this is not working for you with the arm part, you can still have your hands in front. And then I want you to change the sides, but feel the, the leaning pattern here. Let's let go of the block for a few moments. Feel when you take that right foot down, and stretch the left foot forward, maybe a little bit of bend and reach. <laughs> it's definitely a hip flexor um, conundrum here. Okay, so notice, let's just notice when the left foot comes down the ground and I try, I just sit upright. Does that work with your hip flexor? Is that a little much or is that just like it lets it go, but doesn't activate? So let's try going from heel to the ground here. Right knee could be a little bit out, but as you slide the left foot in, you're going to lift up. Cross the left foot to the right knee. Keep that left knee open. And then do what you need so that you can feel upright. We might do a little, little different pattern on this side. We don't want to overdo our arms. So lean forwards. Okay. Feel where the arms are back. Remember, these are important patterns for the shoulders. Hold the sides of the chair. It might be like you're kind of towards the top of the chair behind you. If it's too close to the wall, you can always you know, get up and move it a little bit away. But the chest is reaching wide. You can almost feel kind of a long pressure from this shape. The arching, the cinching up into the lungs. And now if the neck is feeling like it's getting some tension, feel your forehead shift 
So it releases a little bit downwards. And if the shoulders are warm on one side more than the other, you want to try to get the balance with the intensity in the shoulders. That might be lowering the arms on the chair. For me, that's true. It's a little better there. It could be a real simple feeling. And then as you lift up, then crown of the head to the ceiling, center back, good. Separate so that the feet step apart. And then taking your bolster, we're going to reach it forward. And I want to ensure that you're pretty centered here on your, um, on your chair, right? You don't want to get to fall off the chair. But I, I like to be kind of on the edge portion of the chair so that I can use it as a balancing, not like I'm completely dependent on it. So lean forward, have the bolster on its, and its short end so you get the full height of it. And when you reach, your elbows could be pretty soft here. So if you're feeling limited in your range and you're a little bit higher up, that's okay. It's also fine to let the ribs feel like they unravel versus they're in a completely taut position. So if this feels like the tension is building from your shoulder, from your lats, back into your side abdominals, then I would let the brain lower down between the arms and feel the ribs moving with the breath. Right? Feel the movement of the back. So it might be best for us to let the bolster shift as it needs to so you can adapt. And there's some of you that might be more comfortable with the bolster on the floor. But you know, the honest truth is if we go there, right, which might be something that is flexible for you and you can do it, it's sort of cranking a lot here on the SI joint. And I think as you mature, you'll just find these little areas that maybe get inflamed from overdoing the stretch. So finding what's a good balance of range of motion and stability. Okay, let the brain release forward. So you're still requiring some steadiness in the arms here versus floppy. And then as the breath centers in your upper ribs, breathe. Let's let this be a centering moment here with the eyes maybe closed. If your neck needs a little more support, you might let the head tilt down and get the bolster so it's it's helping your arms, which could be your bolster is closer and your elbows are on the bolster edge. This feels really nice for me. In my breath right here with the bolster closer. Okay, so let's just experiment here for a few more moments before we slow the movement into the core muscles. Okay, now as you come back, just bring the bolster uh, flat. Just, just drop, let the bolster drop down. And then take the moment to come back with the, the spine up, kind of feel how you recover. Recover through awareness and breath. And as we lean forward, the aim is to get onto that bolster. Okay, so. You might find a deep forward bend works for you. I'm, I'm into keeping it comfy for my muscles. So as you lean forward, move down, right? Walk the hands forward. You're going to shift back. And what you'll need is a blanket. Let's just be safer than, safer than sorrier on my feet. And I place the blanket just in front of my toes. So when my knees come down onto it, I can reach the hands reaching as far front as they can comfortably stretch through my shoulders. And then the bolster is far enough forward that when you reach into this variation of up dog, your hips, your hip lids kind of have a nice pressure to arch through the spine and the, the abdominal band. Okay, so just feeling when you move back to table, if you notice kind of this abdominal band, if you notice ribs more than like what's below the ribs, 
So go forward again and feel where the hips land down. Again, you might have to move your bolster around. If it just feels like it's too far back under your legs, shift it a little forward. But my bolster is kind of meets down at the, I guess it's not quite halfway down my quad. Maybe it actually is if you think of the quad itself. But it lands there so when I can stretch the hip flexor and reach. I lower down the torso on the bolster. Bolsters down and shoulders center back. Okay, and if the feet get a little bit of a funny turn to them, they kind of contort. See if you can balance the circulation through what part of the abdomen, right? If the lower abdomen just feels like it doesn't have a lot of energy circulating through it. This might be a good part of the session to, to explore, not overdoing it in your back muscles, but feeling the breath pressure into the bolster, the abdomen. Okay, now hands stretch out through the fingers, of course. Feel what spacing besides your bolster feels supportive for your wrists. It's probably not 100% easy, but if you go too far back, right, it's a little bit more angle on the wrist. So we're going to come back up to upward dog, but take some testing presses before you start to commit and feel where is the, not that you have to go farther back with your hands, but noticing what works all its way up the side muscles of the back. So I'm going to go far forward this time because that's a little easier for my sides. And this is, you know, we got a little bit of practice ahead of us. So you want to make a, a nice kind of flat plan, plan platform for your muscles to work from. You really feel as you lift up, this is almost like seal pose, isn't it? Your hands could turn out. Okay, breathing. When you lower, elbows guide close to the bolster, so they're really pinching into the bolster. Come down to Sphinx pose, elbows down. Does the arms kind of pinch in, or can you just kind of let it go? Let the elbows be on the, down into the hand, be pretty heavy flesh. And then get a feel for the legs. And you've got a chair in your way which is really helpful, right? So you won't, you probably are gonna avoid kicking it. So you won't do too much. All right. So feel if you can let that weight pour into the flesh of the arms and isolate the right leg. And I want you to lift that leg up a bit. Now remember you're limited with the chair, so it's nice. So you, you won't go past your, your, your range for your joint. So just get a feel of lifting that right leg you don't have to point the toes or flex, just feel the lift and lower down. Relax the thigh. Take a change into the left leg, lift it up. But you're limited by the chair, which might be a good marker for you. That, that would be the highest you go and try maybe to get the same height on each side. Lower down that left leg. And then just let the hips walk, just shift a little side to side like you're wagging your tail. And hands slide back, chest goes forward, toes curl under, very important toes curl under part. And then when you lift up, I want you to actually push back to all fours, bring the knees together and step the right foot to the top well, to the corner on the mat on the right side and feel if that left hip is supported enough. Plenty of times I observe this one and it looks like we could use more under the thigh. So if you feel like it's difficult to get your left thigh beneath the bolster, you can either add a blanket or you can add your blocks under your hands and that can kind of help you feel that circulation motion down into the front of the rim of the pelvis. So for me, this just feels a little smart uh, for my back muscles to have my blocks under my hands. And then at the mid height, you might go up higher, but keep in mind higher is more arch. Uh, this is kind of a, a moderate level and then lower down, I, I can't quite keep my strength. So 
monitor that stretch in the front of the thigh. Just be cautious here with this right knee that it's not going way over the ankle. Could be just above it. And then as you aim the stretch through the inner right thigh in the left quad, you can let the brain center so the breath is felt. So for some of us feeling our breath might be our brain is a little forward, pitch down. It's probably rare that you would have your head pushing back to feel your breath. But allow for some self-study here. And just feel the motion of breath. If the back is really tensing up, feel if you can move your head a little bit. We're trying to be here for a solid minute for the shape. And now when you come back, just switch sides. Take a moment in between where you're just hands, knees, hands on ground. Round your back into cat. And just feel the, the awareness in the front of the thighs. You're not touching the thighs, but just feeling the thighs. The, if there's a little more space in the front of the left hip, then neutral spine. And then step the left foot to the top, well, side left of your mat. So I just step out. So I'm in a lunge, but it's an open lunge with the right thigh stretching down to the front of that bolster. So I'm trying to crease into it. And this side feels a little tenser than the other for me. So I could put a blanket on top. I could use my blocks, which are pretty helpful because when the blocks come under, you initiate a little more stretch in your abdomen, right? It leans forwards because you're kind of pitching into the hip. But it's up to you. If you don't want to add something to your bolster, that's fine. And see if you can work on the texture and circulation in the front of that right leg. Breathing slow. Feel the extending breath. And the weight into that leg. Just be cautious about the knee pressure. So part of that might be offering the circulation into other areas of the body by kind of witnessing the breath. And it's very normal that you would put your weight into the parts that touch down. I mean, what else would you do? But you, you have a dynamic like this, the life force, right? You have the breath circulating, the invisible. And you can feel where it moves in the body. Feel how circulation spreads. And so a few more moments here. If the, the set of movement in your hip is continuously not like loosening up, you know, notice the perspective of your back. Don't crank it too much to an arch. Be a little cautious of the activity level that you're forcing into the back. So for some of us, kind of tipping our head down might be a smart perspective for the right side of the spine. But now when you come back, push into your hands. No one wants to push into their knee that much. And then let's come up. So let's see. We'll take our bolster. I think this might be kind of fun to try. You're going to move it to the right. You usually use your blocks for this, you know. So you just take the left foot into the center of the mat. Lift up. Turn to the right. Be careful of your knee coordination there. Turn to the right so you're in a wide stance. Okay. So let's go to a wide downward dog. And you don't need your blanket here, so you can toss that back. But what I want you to have is this option of your head to the bolster, okay? A supported pose is always helpful. So if I lower down my head and my hands are on my blocks and I stretch them forward and it doesn't quite touch down, which is the truth, I'm going to slide it in a little closer and see if I can find that support. Okay, what's your option if you can't touch down with your head is 
a blanket on top, okay? So this is a good option as well. I don't think it's required for everyone, but if you don't touch down with ease, just use the blanket. And then I think the challenge here is that the neck might overly arch if you don't need the blanket. So I don't want you to have your head go the opposite arch position. So find a support, blanket, bolster, or bolster, and then your hands are far forward. This feels like a giraffe, giraffe pose. <laughs> giraffe drinking pose. So feel where the feet are in this wide stance. And I have a particular like for feeling the chair besides my leg, but I know it's not that much of an influence. It kind of guards my, my ankle. So taking the moment where you're inverted, breathe. Okay, now let the, the spine find its standard line here. Okay, and then you're going to slide any blocks back. And let's take a left hand onto the bolster. And I want you to take some caution here with your pressure on the wrist. So it's, it's hard not to, when you turn, to force down into the heel of the hand. So instead of pushing the heel of the hand, uh, spider the fingers so that the fingers press down, turn to the right, careful of the knees, right? We don't want to twist the left knee in. So I do a little micro bend in my knees so I do not twist my knee. Lower the right hand down, spider the fingers, turn to your left, <laughs> careful of the knees, swinging the hips around. So rotate, work the rib cage. Good, and then one more time each side. So left hand down, they're not long, are they? So it's moving the ribs, the hips, and then right hand down and swing the left arm open to the left and up. Okay, windshield wipe ring. So come back down with the left hand, now let's turn to the chair. So you can move your bolster aside for a bit here. But what I want you to, to feel is when you turn to the chair, that your right foot is underneath and your reach is through both of the, the legs. Okay, so get the, the path of, um, of reach through the right undercurrent of the leg. So there are two different tracks. And take a micro bend with the right knee. And see if when you do a little itty bitty bend, it's no longer a little itty bitty bend, is it? Okay, so if you have a little bend in that knee, you can almost stabilize your, your hips, I find on this one. If my leg is kind of swings back to a straight leg, it's obviously not a great thing for my knee. So feel a micro bend, okay? Try with that, and then move the chest a little forward. Breathe. Okay, so then we're gonna slide the right foot back. So still the right foot is the dominant foot that you're on. And start to peel the left heel up. Okay. Feel if you get exhausted on a part of the body, like you overly um, activate in one spit and one leg. So I want you to feel that both legs are in action here. The back leg is a big helper. Okay. So the reason I ask you to slide your foot back is we're going to come into half moon. So sometimes just saying that causes a little bit of a mental um, discomfort. So the focus here is just feel the weight into the back foot, the spring load of the ball of the foot. And then as you bend that right knee, you're going to work on lifting the back leg up and using your hands, maybe spider the fingers, maybe you like the heels of the hands on the chair, but feel first the leg up, the left leg up, and then feel if you can steady your balance on the right heel. Think about from the right heel to the very top of the right thigh, like that's a heel too of, the, of your waist. And as you turn the left foot out to the left side, you're reaching the hip bone, the front left hip bone open. You can have your hands stay on the chair. Mm -hmm. You can have the right hand on the chair and turn. If you're too close to the wall, you can scoot a little bit back and see if that's helpful because the chair is just our prop here. Yeah, if this is a little bit of a charged vascular pose for you, just come in and out of it and feel when there's a, a 
of just a bleep of control. There might be a bleep here and there that you can monitor the balance. Yeah. Good. Both hands down. Okay, steady the left foot back, the hands on the sides of the chair, both hands down, that's important. Right foot steps back and then lean forward into that chair. We'll call this upward chair and get have like that, but keep the chair down. Upward chair could be, could be a chair in the air. Okay, so lifting up in the chest and then easeful forward bend. Feet a little wider than hips distance. Hands reach and chest also reaches towards the floor. Hands are on the chair though, they stay steady. And that's a nice kind of barrier so that you can maintain this encouraging stretch through the armpit chest and releasing. Is there anything you feel like you release in this? It, it might be the back, it's a great stretch, the whole back, all the back, the back spaces. even the back of the legs. Okay, now you can bend your knees so you're kind of in a, a standing child's pose almost, but your arms are forward. So your head releases down. Okay, nearly like a squat, but no issues with the knees on this one. Okay, and then as you round your back through like a cat spine, you feel where your feet are behind you. And then I want you to step the right foot straight back, step the left foot forward. Remember the angle of the legs is probably really, the proportional angle is different for everyone in this group. So I want you to make sure there are two different tracks. Don't focus on half moon yet. Feel where the left foot is actually under the chair seat. So for some of us, we might step it farther forward underneath to get that right calf to stretch. That's kind of tempting, but I'm gonna stay with a little bend of the left knee, itty bitty bend, the itty bitty bend pose. And the right foot behind, like both, both legs, the feet are parallel. They're straight forward. Okay, you can create the arch of the spine. You can put your elbows on the chair. That might be kind of a nice getting prepared for half moon. Kind of warm up the hip. Let it know, let it, let the hip kind of feel that influence of weight. Okay, and then I think getting so dedicated to like the pressure of the base leg could, help, could make us lose our balance sometimes, even though it's tempting to really plug in. So, you know, you think about like tree pose or all of this, some balancing poses of, of this sort. Um, it's that extremity that's kind of waving out that you want to connect to be kinesthetically aware of. So when you slide your hands, so they're on the chair now, slide the foot back. Yeah, feel how you can blend your movement of your back leg up. So that for me was a real mild starting awareness. I just kind of lift up my back foot. Last time it was more kind of push, lift, you know, activate. So noticing when the leg goes up, maybe you, you spiral the right hip open really fast and that feels better for you than this slow kind of chugging version of I'm gonna get there, I'm gonna get there. So this left inner thigh is the challenge, right? This is for me is a big challenge, even though I would think of myself as having, being able to do body kanasana and all these poses so easily, that would be that part that stretched. But when I get here, it's, this is a different orientation. So. The right hand could go to the hip, the both hands could be on the chair. If this is better for you, but your wrist hurts, then I would uh, cut spider the fingers, lift up that right leg, and not even get too focused on is my leg up. Remember, you don't want it up, up. you want it at the angle of the, the line back through the hip, right? And then coming up with that right arm, the left foot parallel towards the wall, oh dear. It likes to go all over the place. Steady, breathe. It only helps. Okay, lower the left hand down and take a reach back with your right foot, left foot, 
and then back to that chair, that upward chair, we call it together. Lift the heart. Come back to plank. So instead of the hips pitching forward, they're up and steady. You're pressing. Feet are close. So get them close so the thighs are kind of pressing in together. Okay, I want you just to notice this awareness here with the back. Some of us have maybe the back a little arched. Some it's more back pushing into the seat. But feel right in the center, as much as you can feel centered. Okay, and then lower down the knees. And then swing the feet to the side. And then stretch the feet forward. And I want you to take a single blanket and unfold it so it's flat. But you don't have it in a quarter fold. It's kind of more into this square behind you. And then as you bring your hips forward to the chair, blanket is only under your head. <laughs> Too much there. Okay. So you need a block here and you'll need a ball. Okay. So I want you to have your feet onto the edge of the chair. Second part of the segment here. And your ball between the knees. Okay, we started like this, didn't we? We have this kind of awareness. So maybe hands on the abdomen, not so high on the abdomen, more to the, the dome that moves. And when you inhale, allowing that to lift. And then as you exhale, squeeze into the ball. So the abdomen kind of flows back to the source. Inhale. Expand and exhale, squeezing. And now we'll do this for a few more moments with the focus on the hip flexors. If you can even tap into the front rim of the thigh, you want that to feel like it really drops back. And that, that could be like a, a very Interesting moment when you notice the spine is set centered and that could help the flexors having the back on the floor. So hands besides your hips and stop the squeezing pattern for now and simply push down to your into your feet. Now if your chair is not right up at the wall, this will probably be critical that your chair is near the wall um, because we don't want to slide out. So when you lift up the hips, this chair gets us so much higher into our kind of shoulder stand, right? This is more of a shoulder stand version. And as you lower the spine down, feel the weight into the spine, vertebrae by vertebrae. And then once you land at the sacrum, you want to feel the weight of the tailbone. And then it's kind of like, to me, it's almost like when you, if you were to toss a, a pebble into a, you know, clear water, it kind of seems to resound outward. So when you push down into your feet, it's the opposite when you go up, you're lifting, right? It's, it's kind of bursting out of the hips. You're having that, that full lift of the hip joint. And then let it be steady here. Okay, so I know the ball might not be your, your most pleasant thing to hold on to for this, but I want you just to give it a try. If you don't like it, just be well, you could just push the ball out, I suppose. But have a block and place it under the pelvis. So that block is across, it's horizontal. And I have to be a little careful that it just feels like it supports me. So I've got to find the right arch into that, that lower zone. Now it's not the lumbar, right? It's below. So then I bring the legs up. Okay, so I've still got the ball. Yeah, I have a particular interest in this one for the knee health. So when you have your, obviously the ball is between the knees. It's not anywhere else that it can be held easily. Feel if you have this kind of inner lift there's like they're striving, but there's also kind of not striving for this one. You want to just use the props to support your 
circulation experiment. But feel if you can squeeze into the ball. So if I don't use the squeezing focus, then my my challenge knee feels it a little bit. I can feel, well, you, you can notice that you might have inflammation. So that is obvious in that part of the body. When you go upside down, it's, it's very clear where inflammation could be. So feel when you push into that ball and the legs are very toned, okay? Now bend through the knees, take the ball out and legs go back up. And then as the arms are down by the sides, they don't have to be super, super prim and proper, but they're reaching towards the chair. And then bend through the legs, lower the feet on the chair, and then stretch both legs onto that chair. And go slow. And you know, feel if your arms are noticeably passive, right? See if you can. Move the shoulders back, just inch the arms so they stretch farther down. Maybe you can turn your palms open if you feel safe with the shoulders here. It might be better for you to orient your palms open so the shoulders are moving back. Good. Now one leg may be more responsive than the other on the calf and the foot. You're trying to create some equilibrium continuously by searching out for how to reset the balance. In the meantime, right and left lung working cooperatively, I hope. You're going to slide the feet back into the chair edge. And as you're on that, that rim of the chair, notice if the weight in the pelvis changes. Maybe it doesn't that much. But now you've got the, the pelvic floor uh, with a little bit of natural tone, right? When you go into an upside down place, this is obviously in a toned position without doing any activation technique, just using a block, a bolster, um, a chair like in shoulder stand. You can work on the tone there, embody the tone in the pelvic floor without letting, having your nervous system tense up. So I think that's important with restorative because you can be in that place and have a genuine contribution to that part of your health because you hold the energy in that space of tone. So push down, lift up the hips, and slide the block away. And explore when you let the spine center back down, like right before you lower the spine to the ground. Just let it hold it for a few moments. Notice where you hold it. There's no right place, but it's challenging just to let it be seamless. So once you let the spine center down, come into Baddha Konasana, so feet close together and the knees out. If you don't want your feet touching, you can still get a kind of nice Baddha Konasana in the chair without your feet touching. And if that half moon pose is really tricky for you just a little while ago, this would be a good one to practice for long periods, you know, maybe 10 minutes. Um, when you are reclining, right, with your bolster, you can do this pose with your blocks, holding up the legs. And be, and be careful, right, of this inner thigh sensitivity, right? We don't want to try to force the knees down. Just get this perspective for a moment. And then bring the knees back into center. And we're going to roll up, and we could use our hands at the back of the legs and actually roll straight up. 
Um, you could try that because it's a little more of where we're going with the core, but you could also roll to the side and push yourself up. So coming back up, we're gonna sit, but we're going to try using the ball for this. And I think this group ball has a ball. Yeah, okay. So have a ball, and my legs are up. This is, this is hip flexor 101 here. So the ball, I'm gonna put it back. So it's basically, you know when we do, um, let's not even talk about something else. Let's just be here. So I've got the ball at the very base. I'm not sitting on it. So I lean back and it's, it's a little bit of a holder. Yeah, if you do core classes, this is a typical thing you would use, right? To lean back into is just a ball. Sometimes they're a little bigger, but not a whole lot. So I want you to have a strong hold, like bicep, bicep on here, biceps away. You're gonna grip the back of the leg like you're pulling it outwards, okay? So the thigh muscles, the undercurrent has to kind of be grasping the skin and moving it outwards and leaning back into that ball. Okay, this might be a little bit of a wipeout for you, but just give it a try. If it gets too much, just pa pass. You can do pose passing. But what I want you to work with now is the knees, keep the knees in that same shape, right? So they're still relaxing the calves onto the chair. And we're gonna reach the arms forwards, okay? You're gonna to turn to the right. You gotta lean into the ball big time. Come back center, inhale. Turn to the left so my right arm is forward between, right, it's not touching the chair, but it's between my, my leg path and back to center. Hold the legs, pull yourself to where you feel like you're sitting upright. Okay, now try it with the belt and just see if it's better. It may be so much better. You'll be like, why did we even struggle? But give it a try. Now my ball, the ball thing I think takes some sensitivity to using it like this, but you've probably seen things like this where you're sitting, you would be feeling down, you lean back with the ball. I don't know if you've done that. Chair actually makes it a little more intense, but if you don't like this pattern and you wanna have your feet on the floor, you can do this too. Just keep in mind, I really like the ball for this core work. So taking the, the belt into your feet, so your feet are together. I've got to hold my belt unbuckled. A little too much buckle there for my, my comfort. So lean back and then feel if you lift your legs up. I mean, you don't have to pike all the way up towards the ceiling, but lean back into that ball. And I want you to try to work on lifting the heart and then moving your shoulders center and then centering your head so you're looking straight between the knees, or actually you can't look between the knees because there's no space. Okay, but get a feel for looking to the knees for your spine angle. Okay, try to lean back into the ball. I mean, what's the worst thing that would happen is you fall back, you know, and the ball will hold you. But work with that core control, belly relaxed. Ugh, it's a workout in the core. So lower down the feet. Okay, slide the belt away, good news. Slide the, the feet off the chair and move the ball for the moment and we'll take a blanket, okay? I think, I actually got a blanket back here. I think what I want us to do on this one is have a blanket just like you have here so it's flat. Slide it in towards the foot of the chair and take a moment here when you're seated, your legs go through the chair, under the chair, and you lean forward, forehead down. Okay, so let the feet push. Now, if you want to touch the wall or the bar of the chair, that's fine. It might feel kind of nice in your back to actually reach to the wall or the bar. But take a complete inhale to so spread the breath in the back, outwards, and then center forward. Now, if you like to lean farther forward on the chair, but you don't want to compress in the neck, you can always hold the arms of the chair. This to me is really good for my spine reach versus here. Right? Although this is taught, right? This is taught often. So it's not a, a completely incorrect version, but you know, just feel where things are awake, but you're using the chair to support you. And we're trying to get both legs even 
all the way up into the back of the pelvis. Okay, slide the hands onto the chair seat. And then let's take a turn. So I want you to first, before you turn to your left, I want you to maintain that the sitting bones are even. Could be a little cautious here. I know it seems pretty uh, elementary variations, but I think just maintaining that inner lift is, is just really pretty huge. It's so easy to start to sag and collapse here. So work on that lift. It could be little parts of your waist that just drop in. Uh, and the muscle bands that are different, right? And there's different guarding than let's say your chest and your back because that kind of holds you up because it's, it's kind of tense. So I want you to reach your left hand down to that left leg and actually guide that left knee up, turn the left thigh out so it turns out, and I'm gonna use my hands on the ground besides my legs and pivot my waist to the left. So now my left foot is on the inside of the right thigh. I'm not a big fan of my knee in this angle, so I'll put a ball under it, but you might be just fine, this could be. But if you feel like you try the ball and it feels better, then just use it. <laughs> Must be a message. So the right foot is toes up at the wall. If the bar on the back of the chair, if you have one, that can really help you keep the toes up. All right, take a sandbag. Where could that be? Place it on that left thigh. If you need to reset yourself because your sand is across the space, then come back and join with the left foot on the inside of the right thigh. And then as you have that turn to the left, it's already starting to twist. Instead of you know aggravating here or back, I want you to feel that natural lift and then reach your right elbow to the chair seat. Now, if you're short, this could be challenging. You might need more blankets under you, this is true. But it also makes me work a bit to get that inner lift. It's like I need some suspenders here. I'm trying to get my ribs to kind of keep the inner lift. And then right hand holding my head or my head leaning into my hand, whatever's first. And left arm could be behind your back, could be reaching down to the floor, and it could be up and over to the wall. And if you're capable of having your arm up and that's interesting momentarily, it just could be temporary interest. And you wanna come back with the arm, feel these fluctuating patterns of movement in your connective tissue. So I like to sometimes let myself move in the shapings so it's, it's more movement therapy for me that way. So, you know, you can stay in a still position, but nothing's really still anyway, right? The inside is very active. Let's keep this simple. So feel the rotation through that left side. Breathing so the waist gets the stretch. Take a few more moments here. Good work. Now if the left top thigh is getting a little grippy, grippy in the hippie here, this could happen. It could get a little inner grip. You know, get a feel for when you bring the right arm back to that chair seat, slide the hand onto the chair and turn to the left to see if you can make this turn so it's not involving your right hand on your left knee. All right, so it's, it's more of a suggested inner lift. We're in a rotation in the middle body to the left side. Okay, shift back towards the chair. We're gonna take a simple seated uh, cross-legged forward bend. So I'm gonna encourage you to put your sand on your right thigh. Let the right foot hook in towards the chair, chair foot. This is the foot of the chair. And then rotate your waist so you're facing back to the chair. You can still use that ball. Simple cross-legged. So as the sand is on my, the leg that's stretching dominant, I'm going to lean forward and then I'll reach to the chair. 
And your arms on the chair is probably enough. You know, going any further might be extreme, like holding the bar of the chair, those types of things. But, you know, that is one thing that's coached on this would be something like tilting the chair, you know, reaching the back and you know, trying to maintain that. It's, it's a little, maybe a little extreme. <laughs> okay. Uh, and the reasoning, right, is that it's, it's creating so much tone. It's hard on the nervous system to just release and surrender. So. Let your essential nervous system be soothed as well today. And if you like those shapes where you can put your head on the chair, that's fine. You could also put your other blanket on the chair seat if that gives you support for your neck because it's a little bit higher. You could put your arms under that blanket. And that's even too low for me, so I've got to go up. If I'm going to use the blanket under my forehead. And now, if your arms are holding the, the chair, right, if that's helping you, also awake uh, awareness of that exhale centering. And then that rebound of the inhale. So notice if you tend to inhale and tighten, or if you can inhale and receive that nourishment from the breath and also that hydration into the body. Think of it as hydrating, right? I mean, breathing well, creating some spaciousness. Clearly, it's, it's motion for the organs. Relaxing your grip going forward, which still you tend to pull, and then come back up and feel what you can do as subtle as possible to change to that second side reach. So you notice that the right sandbag is gonna stay. So the left leg just stretches under, and then we rotate. So I just get a feel of my right knee bending over to that side, and I put the ball over there and I get ready and I just use my hands to help swing the, the hips back. So the left foot is aiming straight to the wall under the chair. And then as I lean into that chair, I wanna make sure my right leg for me has a ball under the knee. This makes it easier. Now if your knee goes down and it's very comfortable for you, then you wanna do that because some of us, the hip flexor uh, grips up when we put the ball in there. It's not always the way though. Right? But if you've got some side knee issues, you know, even if it's just on one side, you still might want to protect your other side because maybe it's it's a whispering to the side that feels fine that that's your next. So be careful, you never know. Right? The body's got to be communicating with itself. So lean right and you know, feel you might have your hand palm down to find that inner lift. The right hand could be back to the sacrum so the palm is open. Side stretches up coming here. So lean into the chair and let that left hand hold on to your head. Feel the turn through the waist. Right arm could go up and over. You could get some sense of reaching. And this might be a time you can explore what's occurring in your shoulder. Or maybe it's pretty sleepy and you want to wake up the environment into the joint. You can even go a little bit lower versus really push it up high. Yeah, play with that movement of the shoulder. And then you might eventually let it rest behind you.
And then feeling the success of the spine. Now, you clearly are doing your leaning pattern and the stretch into the back. The side work is in the thoracic. It's a little reach out of the lumbar as it creates the arch. And the upper spine goes everywhere, right? It goes all directions. And now take that inner lift. So right hand uh, reaches back on the ground, left hand on the chair seat, and create the turn without the hand moving off the chair. So ribs are lifting, spine is rotating. Inner awareness up. And now turn back forwards. Caution, caution, right? So you're going to shift your hips back to level. So that means I'm centering my seat with the left foot in front of the right shin, and then take the sand to the left side, maybe your ball. And maybe on this side, it just doesn't feel like it fits, right? So it might be on the other leg. It might be just fine where it's at. So even if one side has a little different openings than the other, Kind of honor where the sensation is at first. And then when you go forward, you might find that holding the chair arms is really helpful. Because you've got to stay from chair seat up versus the low chair seat, but we're not hiding under our chair here. But as you lift up with the inhale, you keep that inner, inner rhythm. And then you can go forward. Again, you could use your blanket under your forehead, but you might go so introspective when you do that, that you lose some of the tone. So it's finding the balance for you personally right now. And so for some of us, it might be blanket is great in the moment. It feels really soothing to have that under your forehead. So you have that, that pressure at the frontal lobes of the brain, which is soothing, calming, maybe closing the eyes. That little pressure there is generally very good for us to do. Now, when you do let the hands slide a little bit, come back up through to sitting upright. And then let's move the, the chair. So we'll use our blanket, okay? And we'll place it to the side and our sand over. And then as you uncross, you'll move your bolster back to your space and you can just shift your chair away, over. And I want you to take your blanket stack. So you've got a couple, this is where you'll need all your boots. And we're gonna go back to that little core thing we did and see what the reaction is in our, our waist and our back muscles. So let's take a couple blankets, stack them up. You might end up needing a higher stack, like you might take the top one up, but we'll see. Okay, behind you. And then the bolster and a ball. Ball is kind of important today. Some days, use it a little bit more than others. Okay, so between the knees, lean back. Okay, just let go, let the body lean into the bolster. I leaned so much, my bolster kind of went sideways. Um, all right, so lean back, and the feet tend to turn in. Right, this is a habit for our bodies are pretty intelligent on trying to guard from something that's going to be, you know, overdoing it. So if the feet pivot in a little bit, just give them a little bit of a spacer. You could put a block between them so they don't get close, but that seems a little, little stern. Okay, so I want you to get a feel of squeezing into the ball, 
and then lifting the chest center. So this isn't a whole lot of work. It's pretty simple focus. And then lean back into the elbows and relax the grip. So it's, it's so subtle, it's hard to see, I think. So squeeze the ball, let your breath keep coming on, moving forward so your elbows are still down and then lean back so you release the pressure of the ball. So keep the subtle work going so you squeeze, and just visualize that you're trying to sit up, but your elbows are still back. This might be tricky. Lean back, relax the grip. Okay. Now when you squeeze into the ball, okay, you're probably using a lot of the muscles that are erupting here, trying to figure it out. But I want you to reach forward, but use that bolster under your back. Like you used the ball earlier when you were leaning back and the feet up. I want you to use the bolster a lot. So I'm about 70% squeezing my ball. I'm not quite completely committed to it. My legs are tired. So try to keep squeezing into the ball. Arms are not on the, no longer touching the bolster. Okay, now lower back, remove the ball, and we're gonna take our block. This will feel nice to stretch your core. Walk your feet out as wide as you need. Lift your hips, slide the block under flat. It could touch the bolster, it doesn't have to. But when you lower back, yeah, I kind of like it somewhat close. But I'm more curious uh, about the bolster under my ribs. So yeah, you might be a little, a little bit uncertain about this spacing. So focus here on the center body, not, not like at the base of the pelvic floor, but where you kind of feel upper pelvis area is supported. The feet are apart, yeah, that's important, that's critical. And then that's going to help the focus into the femur and the load into the, the femur back into the pelvis. Okay, it's a bridge pose. Now, if it's possible for you to reach your feet down, try, you might be too close to the wall, so you might have to kind of finagle this one a bit. But you'll add your sand across the front of the thighs. And I would go very focused on the impression of the sand to where it is quality for you. So if your block is kind of not quite to your bolster, that might affect this one a little bit. But fill in the gaps with your body, right? Fill in the gaps. So you've got, you've got your body parts and on the flesh, that will fill the gaps usually. Okay, make sure the sand is actually helping your core lengthen. Right, it's a cross, it's, balance, it's even, the arms spread the chest open. There's days when having this extra blanket hide under the head, like I just have two, but sometimes I like to go back to one, but this feels for the moment pretty comfortable. But if you become too comfortable, you can always slide a blanket back. But what does that mean, right? So that would change the arch of my neck, but Feel the movement of the chest. You've got to spread the breath higher. And include the spacing of breath so the timing is at least four in and maybe four to five out. Arms could be bending. They could be stretching out. They could be sliding down. Probably they're besides you versus on you. Basic core stretch. So that's the focus today is this being a core stretch. Keep the core reaching. Okay, slide the feet in. Walk the feet in towards the seat. Push the sand to the left. And then we'll reach down to the block, take it away, and bring it overhead. If you're using the side sage block, you roll into that left side. So you, you go from that spine warmth. And then if you use a ball on the inside of the right leg, add that. Let this be pretty mellow, how you're, you're getting into this one. So you're using your approach to 
leaning into the props and then resting on the prop. So it's not that you're kind of using them, right? You're actively getting absorbed into them. So if they're too low, like let's say you need more height under your head and you're tensing up more, then you put your blanket and fold it and you have a little bit more, but then you might notice, oh, that's pulling my jaw up. My work really is to go down into the props. So I think things under our head, the, the whole pillow I, I, conversation is interesting, but in general, you want to try to let it go down, ease into the neck, feel the right arm stretch. Let the waist lengthen. And you're feeling kind of the, the, sur the surface of the skin's motion on that right arm. If it's besides you, you'll be able to feel a little bit more into the ribs. So let's lower our hands down the side. And then do the best you can to actually switch to the other side with as little drama as possible. So let the sand be assisted by being pushed off. Roll to the left, and then you might take a moment where you come up and you turn, and you just have this perspective of the knee swishing to the right side. The left leg maybe needs a ball on the inside, and it's quieting down, right? So you want to get a feel of this left hip and that support, and that left arm maybe goes over. Maybe it's beside you. Maybe it's active, moving. But the right side can kind of meld into the props pretty easily now. And the weight of your head is down, of course, let it be weighted. The bowling ball at the top. And let the ribs expand. Feel the waist stretching down to the hip. Left hand comes down if it's up overhead. And then we're going to keep on this left hip. So It'll, it'll, we'll have a, a little intermission moment between, but you'll slide the sand over to the left. You'll roll to that right side and, and then get your bolster. Um, move it to the right side of your mat. So it's on the side and near the wall. And you're going to roll onto your back and bring that right leg down. Get rid of this blanket. That's not going to work at all, is it? <laughs> And you'll have the ball, where to go? Um, to the sacrum. So you're gonna cross the right, the, sorry, the left leg to the right side. And your right leg is in a strong bend. So you can even bend it further. Just be cautious. Everyone has a different amount of range in their knee. So some of us will be very cozy with a deeper base knee bend. But feel when you have that sand support. Remember, if you're knee sensitive, you go closer to the knee right, because it's less strain on the, the joint. And so, and it might feel like a little heavier load in the back muscles. So just noticing it's weight bearing. So it's probably gonna feel like some load is happening in your body from the sand. It's a load. So when you stretch that left arm out, just like we momentarily have been working on uh, moment to moment, the last few poses, the ribs, now your cross fibers are going horizontal versus, you know, that previous pattern. So feeling that stretches out with the left arm, 
Roll your head left. Breathe in. And keep the simplicity going. And if your head doesn't feel like it's quite enough over, and you want to go back into center, center the brain again. Sometimes that feels better than taking it over to the left. We're kind of resetting the brain stem and the neck. Okay, slide the sand away, switch sides. So when you have that knowledge that you're transitioned to the other side, between the two might be knees to chest. That might be like a very nice perspective of getting back into the centerpiece. And then the centerpiece is below the ribs for you on this position. So when the right leg crosses to the left, you might do some kind of contorting patterns, right? Just to get the crossover that's unique to you. So, you know, you've got, we all have a little bit of unique to each of us kinds of patterns we do in practice. So feeling where the hip is shifted to that left side, the right leg crosses over to the bolster. The sand is, if you have sand, use that on that outer leg. And then that right arm could open. You could have it downwards. You could have it a little bit out from the shoulder. You could let your head roll to the right. And then let the body weight center down. It's a pretty rich stretch for you. Uh, take focus into that joint, into that hip. Breathing. Trying to let the body weight relax. So the movement of the upper back muscles is helping the front muscles elongate. So when we move the ball and then we move the sand, we're going to slide the sand to the wall. Just slide it, roll left, push. And then when you come up, I want you to take the bolster right next to the wall, specifically because of the hip here that we're working. So when you shift down, now let's see the last moment we have the right hip across. So I'm going to lean into my left hip to get upside down. So I'm going to shift down um, to my seat, but I actually want my sitting bones at the wall, if possible, to come to go upside down. That's a little bit challenging. So I try to swing my legs up, and if I'm not far enough on one side of the bolster, the bolster side that I'm leaning into, then I'll inevitably kind of roll off the other side almost. So you just kind of reroute yourself back and use the padding under your back. The padding is really nice, the bolster, as long as you surrender your weight into it. So you might get into a position where you pull the blanket in and then you've got these natural curve patterns. So sometimes getting closer to the wall feels good, but then sometimes you realize it doesn't matter <laughs> in the perspective of your spine. So the idea is to get the, the directional flow in the body. It's all really simple, isn't it? Simple is best, right? Be, live simply and let your practice in this moment be pretty simple. When the feet go up with the sand, it might be really good on the knees, right? Because when you have your feet without the sand, there's the knees kind of squabble and now they can't. The knees can't squabble anymore. There's separation. They can't get a little closer. They've got to stay apart to hold the sand. And the back 
field has to soften into the pose. Yeah, there's some that find this is too harsh on the back, they need less height, they can use a blanket. You don't have to have your legs at the wall, they could be over a chair with your back flat. It's okay, so if it hurts some days too much, it's you know pressing into the kidneys, who knows, it could be all kinds of uh, different speeds in that area of the body that you're trying to get to, to relax and it's not in that mode this time of day, but it's trying to get going. So get back into that neutral setting. So the hands could be out by the sides. They could be resting on your side torso. And then you can feel yourself breathing. It could be a little higher on the ribs. If you're very belly breath oriented, you might bring your hands up. So just the circulation closer to the breathing muscles is apparent. I don't know if they're parents or not. Feeling the weight of your head back. Lifted and lowered breath. Now fine tune the pace of breath. Slowing it down, lengthening, noticing that it's not just length, but it's the inner space gets bigger. It's not the just held up in your nose somewhere. It's moving into your body to bring more spaciousness inside. Now shift the feet off the wall. You can toss the sand, or if you like to be particular about it, you can move it perfectly away. And then with the feet touching the wall, they can slide back up. You can kind of feel the difference in the knees without sand, it has its benefits and its challenges. And then noticing the transition of circulation in the legs, right? But if you do have inflammation in the knees or retention in the legs, right? In your calves, this is something you'll feel the circulation in. It's a good thing to practice, just getting upside down. So it's kind of the most basic science of all for our circulation. And then knees to chest and let your body rock a little tiny, tiny bit. Not too much push into the back of the pelvis yet. And then rotate, come up to sit at the wall, bolster attached, or if you're sitting in front of a chair, and let the knees motion and feel where the shoulders are back. Not lifted, but back. And the hands can either rest in your lap, palms open, they can rest up very peacefully connected in front of the heart center and feel the center of gravity in the pelvis and the abdomen, the center of the heart. And breathe into the space behind your heart. Breathe inwards. And exhale outwards to others, bowing into your heart. <laughs> 